How do I accept another person who does not want to stay in a relationship with me? So this is the stuff that comes up all the time in life, whether we are children in school and one day we have a friend who the next day decides they don't want to be our friend. It happens with boyfriends and girlfriends and societies where dating is prevalent. But it also happens even as we get older. My dad is a, a divorce attorney in LA and divorces come out of typically one person, sometimes it's both, but most of the time it's one person who wants out. Not that the other one, of course, thinks everything is going perfectly, but typically you'll see one who wants to make it work, wants to keep trying, and one who says, enough. So there's so many different times in which we are face to face with people not wanting a relationship with us, whether it's friends, whether it's romantic. Sometimes even tragically we see it in families. Family members who don't speak to each other. Families who have an argument, some kind of a conflict, and stop speaking to each other for years, decades. It's over. Forget it. So there's, there's a lot of different ways in which that problem can arise. And as we speak about so frequently here, we really don't have any control over anything other than ourself. You cannot force someone to want to be in a relationship with you. You certainly can't force anyone to love you, as anyone who's ever tried to do that knows. It doesn't work. In fact, it's almost tragically ironic that the more you try to force and push, the more actually you're pushing that person away. But you also can't even force someone to stay in a relationship without love. You can't force people to do anything. So the solution to this or the the way into this is really the same way into all of those circumstances in our life in which we would like things to be different, but we don't have any control over them. And the only way in this circumstance to handle it is to handle ourselves. For some reason, sometimes it's about us, sometimes it's about them. Typically, it's some combination thereof. Very rarely does someone want to break off a relationship and it's all one person. People will tell you it is. They'll say, you know, it's all your fault. But it's almost never all one person. And the way that we know this is I can't tell you how many times, you know, growing up, you see this all the time with kids, where kids and young people, teenagers, will complain about their parents. Oh my God, my mom this. Oh my God, my dad that. But then friends come to the house, and they say, oh my God, your mom is the best. Your dad is the best. I don't know how you can possibly complain. You've got the best parents. People will complain about what their husband does, what their wife does. And other people say, oh my God, you've got the best husband. You have the best wife. You're so lucky. And so a lot of what goes wrong is an interaction. 
It's very rarely that really one person is all right and one person is all wrong. Typically just has to do with, you know, as they say, rubbing each other the wrong way. But the question that was asked is what to do when someone doesn't want to have the relationship. So that's a different question than how do we save our marriage. When one person has already decided they want out, your situation is no longer how can I make it work. Your situation is now, what do I need to do inside to be okay with this? And there's two pieces to it. The first piece is the same general letting go. When we lose anything, when anything in our life doesn't go according to how we want it to go, we have no choice but to to let go of the expectation of how we expected it to be. To have gratitude for what we had. Because we had it for a certain period of time. And to realize that whatever happens is happening ultimately for a reason. That doesn't mean I deserve it. It doesn't mean I've done something bad and that's why I'm being punished. But it means that the universe's highest goal is to get me to wake up. The universe's highest goal is to teach me something about myself. About the nature of me and the universe. The divinity of who I am. The fullness, the completeness of who I am. The nature's goal, nature's goal, the universe's goal is not everything should always work out perfectly in my life. Everything should always happen exactly as I want it. The universe's goal is that I experience who I am. And some, sometimes that takes the form of Health, sometimes it takes the form of sickness. Sometimes it takes the form of success. Sometimes it takes the form of failure. Sometimes it takes the form of gain. Sometimes it takes the form of loss. But to recognize that my highest goal in life is not to hold on to everything. My highest goal in life is to experience the truth of who I am. And if in order to make that happen, the universe burned down my house, or the universe made the stock market crash, or the universe has had me left by someone I love, it's so that I can take that next step on my my awakening. So that's, that's the general part of that. The, the more specific part is when it's a love relationship, to recognize that just because someone has stopped loving me, just because someone wants out of the relationship, and again, remember, as I said, this is a two-part interaction. It doesn't mean there's something wrong with me. It simply means that where that person is now in their growth, where I am in my growth, it no longer fits in a way that is comfortable to that other person. It absolutely doesn't mean there is something wrong with me. Sometimes it's the opposite. Sometimes it's I've grown... I've changed. I've expanded in a certain way. And the person I was in a relationship with doesn't want to grow and expand that way. You see it happen all the time with people on a spiritual path whose friends suddenly want to stop hanging out with them. You used to go out to parties. You used to go out and get drunk. You used to go and pick up girls or guys or whatever it was. And 
You had friends who you did that with. And then suddenly you started meditating or suddenly you embarked on a spiritual path and suddenly going out and getting drunk just isn't the way that you want to spend your free time. Suddenly randomly picking up people isn't what appeals to you. And so you say to your friends, well, you know, instead of the bar tonight, maybe we could go and listen to an inspirational talk. You know, there's this spiritual person, they're giving a talk, let's go there instead. Or instead of, instead of going to the club and getting drunk and dancing to that music, let's go listen to some kirtan. There's a beautiful kirtan program going on, let's go there. And slowly, slowly you may find that your friends stop calling you on the weekends. Or when you call them and you say, you know, let's hang out, suddenly they've got all kinds of excuses of why they can't hang out. Now, it doesn't mean there's something wrong with you. What it means is that how you've grown, how you've changed, is something that is not comfortable for them. They would like to keep drinking and picking people up and doing things that no longer appeal to you. And so that's just one example, but it's really important to remember that it doesn't mean that there's something wrong with you. It doesn't mean you're the problem. It doesn't mean they're the problem. It simply means that there's, there's a distinction between what my values are, what my priorities are, and what theirs are how I want to spend my free time, how they want to spend their free time. But just because someone says they don't love you anymore, someone doesn't want to be in a relationship with you anymore, doesn't mean that you lose the love. The love that you feel for someone is inside you. It doesn't, it doesn't exist in them. They have sparked it. They have catalyzed it. They have been the medium through which you have experienced love. You know, the example that I always give about this is these air conditioning units we have in the back of the room. Well, they give cold air. And if you stand close to them, those of you on the couches in the back, you get the most cold air. And those of us up at the front of the room, we get the least cold air. And if I go out and I go around to the other side of the wall, I'm not going to feel any cold air. Because the cold air literally exists in those machines. It's not that the machines have somehow catalyzed my hypothalamus to change how it functions and suddenly to give me cold air inside. It's not that it's changed the working of my body to suddenly make me feel cooler. The cold air is actually a property of those machines. In order to benefit, you have to stand close to it. But that's not how love works. When you love someone, They've, they've catalyzed a change in you. And that love is now in you. And yes, you may experience it more when you think about them. You may experience it more in their presence because it reminds you. But when they get up and they go to the grocery store or they go away for the weekend or you go home at night and they go home at night, you don't feel less love. The love is in you. It doesn't, it doesn't vary based on distance. And so in the same way, if that person, instead of being physically distant, simply says, I don't want to be in the relationship. Well, that love, that's still your right. No one can take that from you. They can remove their physical presence. They can remove the relationship. They can say, I don't want to be your friend or your boyfriend or girlfriend or your husband or wife. But they cannot take away the love in your heart. They cannot make you stop feeling that. That's, that's in you. And so remember that because so much what hurts is the love feels so good. 
Loving someone feels so good. And when we lose that, when we lose the relationship rather, we feel like we've lost the love because we cut ourselves off to it. Now when I think about that person, I feel pain instead of love. And so I cut myself off. To go into that love is, is painful. But if I, can, if I can realize that the love is actually still there, the pain, pain is in my mind, pain is in my ego. And I don't mean that to belittle it. It's just that's where it exists. The love. Love is in me. And I can access that whether somebody has chosen to end a relationship with me or whether someone has passed away. In both cases, they are no longer with me physically. But in both cases, I still have my love for them. That's, that's my gift to me. They just catalyzed it. And so that's another really important thing to remember is they can remove their presence. They cannot remove the love from your heart. And so hold on to that because love is a gift. And even when you start loving someone else, which pretty inevitably you will, feels like you never will, but chances are you will, you can still love them as well. Because the beautiful thing about the heart is it just keeps expanding. It's not like a box that can only hold a certain amount and then it bursts. The heart actually keeps expanding. The more you love, the more it expands. So hold on to that love. And then, of course, open the heart and love more.